We had the privilege of doing the first real green apartment building in the city. The Solaire's green roof captures rainwater, which is reused in some of the building systems. It has its own wastewater treatment plant, a first for an apartment building in New York. The biggest green technological breakthrough came with its photovoltaic cells, or PVs, which supply 5% of the building's power. The PVs actually became part of the design of the building. So it's really one of the first times that you actually put PVs into the wall of the building instead of putting them on the roof. So we really had to work with a lot of the window manufacturers to coordinate how you sort of connected glass to an electrical component. The photovoltaics are not seen as something that's an appendage, but actually integrated into the design in a successful fashion. Not only is this panel providing energy, but it's actually serving as part of the building exterior, the building skin. Across the street at the Verdesian, another green technology is being employed to literally redirect sunlight. My name is Kevin Grady. I'm the building engineer here at the Verdesian. They're called heliostats, and when fully operational, they'll automatically follow the path of the sun throughout the day. The park next door only gets 3% of sunlight during the day. The heliostats look for the sun and they direct it into the park so trees and plant life can get more life out of them. Sunlight will be bounced from the specially designed eight-foot wide mirrors to a park across the street, which is still under construction. Without these heliostats, this new park will receive little direct sunlight. They are controlled remotely through a modem from Germany where they can be removed throughout different times. They can also be moved here at the building by engineers. We're also looking at having it at night time so the moon can reflect light so you won't have to spend as much electricity on lighting controls. A few blocks away, an even greener apartment building is under construction, called the Vision Air. Each of its 33 stories are being built with sustainable materials. This building uses concrete made with fly ash. Fly ash is an industrial byproduct which replaces cement. Cement historically uses a lot of energy to be produced, thus saving energy and using a recycled content in its construction. Concrete made with fly ash is denser and has a smoother surface than regular concrete. How green will this building be? Heating for these apartments will come from geothermal energy. Geothermal heat can be tapped from almost anywhere in the world, even the bedrock underneath New York City. The geothermal system essentially uses the free energy of the Earth right below Manhattan Island in the bedrock. Even the construction equipment is being used in an environmentally conscious way. The cranes that we're using here at the project use ultra-low sulfur diesel fuel, so it's better for the environment and reduces the fossil fuel emission impacts on the air quality. A little further up in New York's Midtown, the largest green office building in the world has just been completed. The Hearst Tower. It has a rainwater reclamation system. The furniture and building materials are made from renewable resources, and natural light is used throughout the building. But the Hearst Tower's main claim to fame, besides its beauty, is that it's a pioneer in environmental sustainability because of the way it was built. It uses a system known as a diagrid, a first for a building in the U.S. One of the unique things about the Hearst Building is the diagrid that we have on the outside of the building. It's really the structure or the frame of the building. A typical building has vertical columns. The diagrid means there, there are no vertical columns on the outside of the building. This building really is a triangle shape, and a triangle shape makes the building stronger, and at the same time, you're using less steel. A lot less steel. 2,000 tons less. A 20% savings over a comparable conventional office building. Triangles are stronger than squares because the forces supplied by a load are equally distributed. The ectoskeleton, the structure of the building, helped create just tremendous savings in the amount of steel that was employed in the building. It's a much more efficient structure, so that's less natural resources, less embodied energy that's being employed in the building. But the other benefit is less steel means less encumbrance, less elements around the perimeter, so you get these great sweeping views 
as a result of Manhattan. The design technology or the engineering actually creates a better built environment, a better place for people through that integration. And what will the buildings of the future look like? Kevin Burke's architectural firm, William McDonough and Partners, has been exploring some of the most exciting green building concepts. Our office was asked to take a look at the design of the airport and imagine what an airport of the future would be like. Our design incorporates photovoltaic panels where the roof of the airport is actually creating energy for the building below or the integration of green roofs in the airport, mitigating the temperatures of the airport facility, capturing the rainwater, producing oxygen, all of those benefits that we get mutually from the, the introduction of these technologies. This is a design for a, a city in China. The over 600 million people that they're looking to have moved to their cities in the near future and how we can help them do that in a way that is not going to have adverse effects on their environment. Our challenge was to look at this farmland that exists in the Chinese countryside and come up with a way to create a city that would not eliminate the productive capacities of the farmland. And so our concept here is that literally to take the farms and lift them up to become the roofscape of the buildings and put the city down below. The waste streams from the building could be captured and the nutrients could be used as fertilizer. We're looking at providing as much connectivity from roof to roof with these bridges that we have. Also, the incorporation of solar panels, both for the creation of energy and for hot water. Each of these individual building blocks could operate as an organism within the sort of context of the overall city. We were commissioned by a magazine to give our thoughts about what the workplace of the future would be like. The building clad in our skin would be composed of a photovoltaic panel system, so it would be creating energy or look to incorporate plants both on the building exterior but also within indoor-outdoor atria, so people within the building at each of the various levels would have places where they could go outside and be connected to the outdoors. Finally, we thought about notions of design for disassembly, so how this building at the end of its life might be actually taken apart and some of its constituent parts being recycled for further use as building products.